In ancient times, there was a special place dedicated to the renowned angel Michael in the near Middle East. This sacred spot, known as the Michaelion, was crafted in the early 4th century by the great Constantine at Chalcedon. Imagine standing on the grounds of an ancient temple called Sostinian, feeling the connection to healing waters, as this sanctuary emerged as a symbol of reverence for Michael. People in Phrygia, which is present-day Turkey, where Angel Michael was venerated held deep respect for Michael as a healer. In the Coptic Arabic Hexameron by Epiphanius of Salamis, circa 310 to 320 to 403, Michael was described as taking on a significant role. Epiphanius also suggested that after Satan's fall, Michael stepped in to fulfill the responsibilities once carried out by Satan when he was among the noble angels. It was a sort of divine replacement, as Michael assumed the role previously held by Satan. After Constantine's triumph over Licinius near the Michaelion in 324, a significant painting portraying the archangel defeating a serpent became a central masterpiece at the site. This artistic creation played a pivotal role in shaping the standard representation of the Archangel Michael as a heroic saint vanquishing a dragon. The Michaelion, evolving into a splendid church, not only stood as a remarkable edifice but also served as a prototype for numerous other Eastern Christian churches. This, in turn, propagated devotion to the Archangel Michael across a widespread network of followers. In the 4th century, Saint Basil the Great, in his homily known as De Angelis, elevated Saint Michael above all the angels. He bestowed upon Michael the title, Archangel, because he served as a herald to the other angels, a designation derived from the Greek term Rochiel Phenugamlandomicron, Archangelos, as mentioned in Jude 1 verse 9. This perception of Michael's preeminence endured into the 6th century. In Rome, during this time frame, the belief in Michael as a healer persisted. Following a devastating plague, the afflicted sought solace and recovery by spending their nights in the church of Castel Sant'Angelo, dedicated to Michael for his role in saving Rome. There, the sick patiently awaited the manifestation of the archangel, finding hope and healing in their faith. In the 6th century, the Western Church witnessed a surge in devotions to Michael, evident in the establishment of dedicated feasts recorded in the Leonine Sacramentary. This growth continued with the inclusion of the feast. St. Michaelis Archangeli, in the 7th century Gelasian Sacramentary and the 8th century Gregorian Sacramentary. Historical documents from this period also make reference to a Basilica Archangeli, which, although no longer standing, was once located on Via Salaria in Rome. These feasts and religious commemorations underscored the increasing reverence and significance accorded to Archangel Michael in the Western Christian tradition. In the 6th century, the angelology put forth by Pseudo Dionysius gained widespread popularity, assigning Michael a specific rank within the celestial hierarchy. Later, in the 13th century, scholars like Bonaventure asserted that Michael held the esteemed position of the Prince of the Seraphim, leading the first among the nine angelic orders. Thomas Aquinas, in agreement with this angelic hierarchy, stated in Summa I 113.3 that Michael is recognized as the prince of the last and lowest choir, known as the angels. These interpretations and classifications contributed to shaping the understanding of Michael's role and status within the celestial realms. The Michael Ion stands as one of the earliest and most renowned sanctuaries devoted to Saint Michael the Archangel within the Roman Empire. Tradition holds that Emperor Constantine the Great, 306 to 337, commissioned its construction in the 4th century. This sacred site was erected atop the remnants of an ancient pagan temple, situated just north of Constantinople, modern Istanbul, in the village of Sustinian, modern Istany, on the European bank of the Bosphorus Strait. The previous pagan temple at the location had a history tied to healing and medicine, and this association persisted among Christians. They continued to attribute the Michaelion with the presence of healing waters. The Michaelion, transformed into a splendid church, became an influential model for numerous other churches across Eastern Christianity. Its architectural and spiritual significance extended far beyond its original site, leaving an enduring legacy in the Christian tradition. At the site, known as Istini, there once stood a temple called Leistinian, Greek, Lambda Epsilon Omega Sigma Theta Neodomicron or Sustinian, 
Greek, Sigma Omega Sigma Theta Nu Iota Omicron Nu, before the 4th century. This historical location corresponds to modern Istany. According to a widely held tradition, dating back to at least the 6th century, the Church of St. Michael at Sostinian was established by Emperor Constantine the Great. Legend has it that Constantine visited the temple, believed to have been erected by the Argonauts and dedicated to Zeus Sostinios, or a winged deity. Seeing the winged statue, Constantine interpreted it as a Christian angel. After spending a night in the temple, Constantine reported a vision in which the angel revealed itself as the Archangel Michael. In honor of this revelation, Constantine converted the structure into a church dedicated to Saint Michael. However, some scholars, like Raymond Janin, suggest that this tradition might be a later invention, possibly created in competition with another prominent shrine to Michael at nearby Annapolis, which had an earlier origin. Nevertheless, historical records confirm the existence of the Church of St. Michael at the turn of the 6th century, serving as the headquarters for the rebel Vitalian and visited by Emperor Anastasius I. 491 to 518 in 515. Furthermore, the early 5th century Eastern Christian historian Sozomen attested to the devotion of crowds at Michael Ion and documented reports of healings. Sozomen himself claimed to have received healing at Michael Ion. The pagan temple, with its prior association with healing and medicine, retained its reputation in Christian tradition, continuing to be linked to the concept of healing waters. By the late 9th century, the Church of St. Michael at Saustinian had fallen into ruins, a silent witness to the passage of time. Its dilapidated state persisted until Basil I the Macedonian, 867-886, took the initiative to rebuild it. This imperial reconstruction elevated the church to new heights, overshadowing its rival counterpart in Annapolis. At some point following its restoration, a monastery became associated with the church, though the exact date remains uncertain. The monastery is securely documented from the 11th century onward and maintains a consistent presence in historical records until 1337. Raymond Janin proposes a hypothesis that the church met its demise in the 15th century. It is speculated that, during this period, the materials from the dismantled church may have been repurposed in the construction of the nearby Romeli Hasari fortress. Thus, the legacy of the Church of St. Michael at Sostinian endured through centuries, witnessing both times of neglect and resurgence, until its potential final chapter in the 15th century. Constantine, the first Roman emperor to embrace Christianity, made a historic move in 313 AD when, alongside his co-emperor Licinius, he signed the Edict of Milan. This groundbreaking decree granted Christians the freedom to worship openly and construct public churches, marking a departure from the earlier necessity of practicing their faith in secrecy. Despite this initial collaboration, Constantine and Licinius eventually became adversaries, leading to a conflict that unfolded in 324 AD. In the Battle of Adrianople, situated near the Michaelion, Constantine emerged victorious against Licinius. The triumph was attributed by Constantine to Archangel Michael, underscoring the emperor's belief in divine intervention and further solidifying the association between the archangel and significant moments in his life and reign. Constantine held a strong conviction that both Licinius and Arius served as agents of Satan, drawing a parallel between them and the serpent described in the book of Revelation 12 verse 9. This association was vividly expressed on Constantine's coins, where he portrayed Licinius as a serpent. Following his victory over Licinius, Constantine went a step further by commissioning a representation of himself and his sons slaying Licinius, symbolized as a serpent. This imagery drew inspiration from Christian teachings about the Archangel, to whom Constantine attributed his triumphant victory. Subsequently, a similar depiction gained prominence at the Michaelion, portraying the Archangel Michael himself slaying a serpent. This artistic representation eventually evolved into a major work of art, contributing significantly to the standard iconography of Archangel Michael as a warrior saint. The imagery of the Archangel triumphing over the serpent became a powerful symbol within Christian art and iconography. Following the construction of the church, a monastery was added to it, and subsequently, four additional churches dedicated to Archangel Michael were established in Constantinople. 
Over the reigns of several emperors succeeding Constantine, the number of churches honoring Archangel Michael in Constantinople expanded to 15. The Michaelion, having stood as a magnificent church, served as a beacon for others. Reports of miracles occurring there led to its emulation, becoming a prototype for hundreds of other churches in Eastern Christianity. However, in Western Christianity, churches dedicated to the Archangel took some time to catch up with their Eastern counterparts. The connection between Archangel Michael and healing, as well as protection, endured into the 6th century. In Rome, after a devastating plague, the ailing sought refuge in the church of Castel Sant'Angelo, dedicated to Archangel Michael for his perceived role in saving the city from the plague. This practice echoed the earlier traditions at the Michaelion, emphasizing the enduring belief in Archangel Michael's healing and protective powers. Thank you for your support.